right, so I take three. I saw several videos on YouTube where people have uh, used uh, lithium polymer batteries meant for RC vehicles on cordless drills that either came with NICADs or lithium ion batteries. And I found uh, this beast right here, a 9.6 volt Porter cable. And the drills that I saw in the videos were mostly 9.6 volts as well. And it costed me about what you would pay for a new keyless chuck in the stores. And this keyless chuck actually works better than the one that's on my 18 volt Hitachi. So I figured uh, even if the experiment did not work, I wasn't going to cry over it. I could use this keyless chuck elsewhere. And maybe the, the gears and transmissions and what have you. But it did work. And this is a border cable that was made in the U.S. That's uh, back when uh, Porter Cable made almost all their tools in the U.S. It's only 9.6 volts, but I think uh, that's around what power was at the time. I think they also had 12s. I think by the time 18 volts rolled around, almost none of the tool manufacturers made cordless drills in the U.S., I, although I think Makita's corded drill is still made in the U.S., but not their cordless versions. Anyways, I digress. This is a Dean's connector. I soldered that in right onto the uh, battery contacts. And I saw this experiment done with a 9.6 volt Makita, but the batteries that the guys on YouTube used were these 11.1 uh, volt batteries, 22 milliamps. And I believe the batteries that came with this Porter cable were uh, 2,000 milliamps rather than 2,200. So that's a little bit of extra oomph, plus the extra little boost in voltage also make it spin faster at the maximum speed. Now this drill did not come with batteries. It did not come with a charger, which is probably just as well. You don't want to charge these on a NICAD charger. They explode. But I think you knew that already. Plus, another cool thing is that they can balance charge, which is something that the even the new lithium-ion batteries that come with new cordless drills don't have. They don't balance charge, and so a lot of those batteries have been dying quickly. But this will probably last quite a while. My only gripe is that, unlike the Makita drills that people on YouTube were doing this experiment with, the battery does not fit inside of this casing even though it took a pod type battery that would stick up. So let me just uh, connect this and uh, we'll see it in action. It's actually a little bit faster, like I said, because the because the voltage is higher than it would be with its proper 9.6 going forward. But if you put it in reverse, that's about what I remember the 9.6 version sounding like, although probably on reverse it would go a little slower than this. That's what the forward sounded like. I'm basing that on the fact because I saw Norm Abram use this exact kind of drill on some 90s era New Yankee Workshop episodes. But, uh, I guess the next thing would be is to figure out how to get that battery not to dangle like that. I might build an enclosure out of plexiglass or use some zip ties. I don't have any spare zip ties right now, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, get some rubber bands. I like how it has this uh, little uh, lip on the other end. It gives it potential to make maybe make a hinged enclosure. I'd probably go with either wood or plastic plexiglass. It'd probably be pretty easy to make a metal one, but I'd be worried about the metal cutting into the battery, and that'd be a problem. Hmm. It's on low transmission right now. Put it on high. Anyways, uh, I suppose the next course of action would be to test this on some screws and maybe even drill some holes with it. I was thinking of primarily using this one as a screwdriver and using my 18 volt one as a uh, for the drilling. But uh, yeah, that is it.
All right, enjoy. All right, so here's probably what you've been waiting to see. There's a piece of scrap wood over here. What we're gonna try to do first is uh, drive a screw into this uh, block of wood here. See if I got enough forward. Yeah, I'm not even gonna drill a pilot hole. Just gonna see if this can pull this off. Hey, it worked. Now let's get it out of there. This is a Porter Cable 840 drill. These particular drills had a very unique sound to them. And of course, what, you, what you've really been waiting for, let's drill a hole. Put it on high speed transmission. And here we go. Yep, that went all the way through on this uh, piece of scrap wood. Let's uh, get, get that bit out of here. Pretty powerful, especially considering that this is only using 11.1 .1 volts on a, and it's supposed to use 9.6. But Porter Cable made some pretty top quality tools back in the day. So, it doesn't surprise me at all. And this is a, uh, I was doing all this lengthwise too. I've been using this to test out my 18 volt Hitachi, and now I'm using it to test out this recently restored Porter cable with an RC battery. And it works pretty well. So the experiment was a success. Now I just gotta build an enclosure to protect the battery. Alright, thanks for watching. Enjoy.